In our last video, we ran the twin turbo LS motor wide open at full boost for over five minutes. Here we go then. It was pretty nuts, but now I want to take a minute and explain piece by piece what we did to make this engine work. This is a twin turbo LS. It's 260 cubes and it's going to go into a river race boat. So I want to show you some of the components that we have picked for this and I'll show you kind of my little secrets and why I think it's going to make it a little better and uh, hopefully you like it. We had J pistons. We designed this piston to withstand this kind of boost. So one of the things that we did is we ran a full skirt on this piston. So the piston really wasn't designed for lightweight. It was designed for strength. Also, the crown thickness of this piston is 330 thousandths. To give you an example, on a normal piston, it's like a normal turbocharged piston, it's like 200. So we've added an extra 130 thousandths to the thickness of the crown and that's gonna help it withstand the heat that this thing's gonna see. Another thing is that we're using this H13 tool steel pin. It's 225 thousandths walls. You can see this thing is like super thick. And I think what, what's kind of cool, it's another trick, is I took a big block Chevy rod, which has a 990 pin, and we grafted that into this piston. And this rod is a 400 long big block Chevy rod, so it's 6535. And that's going to make a huge difference in strength right there because we actually have a big block Chevy rod in a basically a small block LS. So the block is the foundation of everything. We're starting with a GM LSX block. The reason why I've chosen this block is it has two extra head bolts per cylinder, which is going to hold the head down under boost conditions. We've actually gone into the mains and we've drilled through the main oil galley and then we've drilled through there and actually made it to where we can put these little 26 thousandths jets and these will shoot oil on the bottom of the pistons. So what this is going to do is when that piston is sitting there glowing red, it's 1400 degree, you know, combustion temperatures on the top of the piston. It's going to be doing that for a half an hour. We're going to shoot oil on the bottom of the piston to cool the piston down to try to keep it alive. And I'll show you a little example of how that's going to squirt by just taking a piece of paper and putting it up in airing it through that and you'll kind of get an idea of how how it works. So I'm going to use this air gun. I'm going to put it in the actual jet and then I'm going to turn the air on and you'll be able to see the air shooting this piece of paper up. And what that's simulating is that's, that's actually oil is going to be spraying there instead of air. And that's going to be getting all over the piston and that's going to cool the piston down. So another thing to point out is we went ahead and we've cut these grooves around every cylinder. This is what we call O-ringing. I go ahead, we cut this at like 48 thousandths thickness, maybe 31 thousandths deep. And then we use, which is kind of cool, not a lot of people know, is we use piano wire, which is stainless and it's really hard. It's a really bitchin' wire to use for O-ring. And we put piano wire in these holes and they stick out of the deck, which goes ahead and pushes on the gasket. Another thing that we're doing is we're running this billet Callies crankshaft. So this billet Callies crankshaft is fully counterweighted. So if you can see these two center counterweights, they normally are not on there. Uh, we've knife edged the crank here, so this will help it chop up the oil. It was all cut from a billet bar. So this thing is super stout. But if you look right here, the distance between the crank and the rod, um, it's only 2.7 inches a stroke. So this motor is smaller than 260 cubic inches. That sounds kind of weird for an LS, but we feel that putting this out, we're going to actually, you know, demolish the field with this little 
little rule book uh, change here. So we're gonna see how that works. This is a all billet dry sump made by Daily Engineering. Um, it's super important because in an engine where you're gonna be pounding on it full throttle for the whole time, uh, you're gonna need good oil on those bearings. So I'm gonna actually separate this out and kind of show you some of the trick features of this oil pan itself. If we flip this pan over here, you can see that they've separated each main into its own scavenge area. Inside of here, you've got you know a screen and this is sucking oil out of each one of these cavities. And what's unique about it is there's no lines. Normally on a dry sump, you're hanging the oil pump out and then you have lines going to the oil pan. Well, they've went ahead and bored the own, their own cavities. So this oil gets sucked out of this cavity, which is in the pan here. Oil gets sucked out of both of these in here and then oil gets sucked out of here. So they've eliminated all the lines and made this little cover plate, which is all O-ringed, to go on top of the pan, which is pretty damn trick. The pump itself goes on top of that, like so. So basically, when this is spinning, it's sucking oil out of here, it's pumping oil out of here, it's sucking oil out of here, but there's another thing that we've added to this thing that makes it very different is that we've actually added a air oil separator. So what happens is an engine when you're revving it really hard, the oil gets mixed with air and it starts frothing and you don't have full oil anymore. You have oil and air and air is not a good lubricant. So on the back of this pump, before it actually goes out to the tank, we've got basically a little flap wheel that takes the oil and it flings it out into this cavity right here. So you get full clean oil out of this port and all the aerated oil goes to this port. So the engine is fed with good clean oil that doesn't have air. And that's gonna be a huge difference in my opinion as far as how this thing will live over a long time. And it's something that not a lot of people discuss and I feel like you know, you guys should take a look at that and might be inspired by that for your race project. So another thing that we do is that we drill the camshaft bolts and safety wire them. The bolts on LSs are known for coming loose and then you break the bolts off in the camshaft. You just have all sorts of problems. So we've drilled the bolts and then we put a wire through the bolt and twist the wire so the, the, wire, uh, so the bolt can never come out. So this is a Inconel exhaust valve. Now this, for me on a turbocharged motor, is a must. On a regular valve, what'll happen is it'll start getting really hot, it'll get really soft, and then it'll end up tuliping in this valve. So you always want your exhaust valve to be made out of Inconel. And the way to tell if you have an Inconel valve if you're in question is nobody really cuts an entire valve from Inconel. So they either friction beam weld or they attach this stem to the Inconel head. So you can tell on an Inconel valve, it's non-magnetic, but then when you go to the stem, the stem's magnetic. It's kind of cool if you get in a bind, you thought you mixed something up, you can just go, oh, okay, it's not magnetic, and then boom, you know. In the next part of the equation, we've got the camshaft. Now the camshaft is basically the mechanical brains of the operation. So these events, these lobes, how you design them, when they open, when they close, how fast they open, how slow they close, these are all key elements of getting a valve train that actually works right. So we've designed some specific lobes for this engine. Not only that, this engine is going to run at high RPM for a long time, so we want the lobe to be smooth and gentle so the valve screen can control it. Now we're at the intake. So I've chose this Holly EFI High Ram. It's got a cathedral port style intake. It's got a nice long straight runner. Uh, we've got these Holly uh, 160 pound injectors and again, a Holly uh, throttle body. Um, I think it's gonna be a good combination for this uh, project. We've put some nice style connectors on this thing because it's gonna see a lot of vibrations. So these pins that are in here, they're machine pins. You can take them in and out a bunch of times without having to worry about it. And in a race application, you want that. I mean, there's a lot of things that we've kind of engineered into this engine to try to make it work. And uh, we're either gonna be crying or laughing, one of the two, or maybe both.
we just pulled this thing off the dyno and as you can see it's still in full trim and I cannot believe how cherry this thing is. I'm not even gonna replace the bearings. Look at the bearings. Like the bearings right here, this is a H series right here. So this isn't even really, this isn't even wear. This is just, I mean, this thing, it looks perfect. Look at the rod bearings, man. I mean, we hung on this thing for at wide open throttle over an hour combined with all the different pulls. This thing is just freaking money. So stoked on that sucker. Badass. <laughs>